friends, uh, before we commence the next session, which will be the last plenary session of the day, I have an announcement to make. Uh, we are lucky that we have amidst us a very eminent medical professional from Bangalore, Dr. Sunita Rana Agarwal. Uh, she, Dr. Sunita Agarwal is chairperson of Dr. Agarwal Hospitals and Gene Research Foundation. She has won the best paper scientific, uh, a, a best scientific paper at the American Society Cataract Refractive Surgeries and has been given the Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Academy of Ophthalmology. She has treated over half a million people surgically. Uh, she is the first person to transplant artificial cor corneas on the blind soldiers in the war zone of Iran. Friends, the best commendation she has is, and for which not only all, all of us who are in Bangalore, Bangaloreans, but also all in India should be proud, that the government of India has recommended her for Nobel Prize in Medicine. <laughs> that deserves and we have requested her at the last minute to take it. Yes. And after uh, her brief presentation uh, for a few minutes, she will be, uh, she, her, this thing will be followed by the last session. I am requesting Mr. Arun Balakrishnan to please chair the last session. Dr. Sunita Rana Agarwal. Almost all the dignitaries in India, from Prime Minister, President, President, Prime Minister, Ministers, downward, she has cheated. And uh, we wish her the best of luck. I'm sure you enjoy it. And an acclamation for our first Indian Nobel Prize in medicine. Thank you very much, this wonderful August gathering here. My mentor, Swami, Dr. Partha Sarthi, um, Aluwalia sir, and Ashok Kapooji, and this whole wonderful IOD over here. It's uh, really an honor for me to be amidst you and give you this talk on CSR. Um, I'm actually a third generation eye surgeon, and we have, I have uh, my four sons, and now over 70 other hospitals. And we have been doing the CSR for a very long time. But what I really have come here to give you is a little food for thought. Uh, essentially, CSR will rest on a three-legged stool. One, health. Two, education. And three, jobs. In whichever format you want it, technical, education, whichever format you want it. One third of this CSR, we can take the brunt off if you and me can partner together to take what we are going to call MANA, DNA gene therapy. Let's give this situation of health for all to the person who needs it the most, and that is you and me and our rural brethren. For over 100 years, my family and me, that means my grandfathers on both sides, my parents, on, but my parents, both my mother and father, we have all been going out to the villages, treating the patients, bringing them back for surgeries. We were essentially only in eyes. However, from there, a very, very strong desire arose that we should be able to tackle far more than be not being able to do anything about it. At that point of time, and I think the situation hasn't really changed so much, that more than 70% of India is in the rural areas. Our primary health centers are combating that to a very, very great extent. However, our poor rural person finds it very difficult to go to a base hospital and treat themselves. Yes, I am a gold medalist from Gujarat University, so I know I have a lot of Gujarati friends here. Gujarat is a very, very different where the health parameters are concerned because uh, there's a lot of trust organizations are in place. But here, now let me just take you into a little different world of science. 
I don't know if you can see yet. I'm just going to grab this. Hello. Yeah. So this is a DNA. And when the DNA becomes bad, it gets denatured. This denatured DNA causes disease. Now, if in your dreams also, you can think of something fantastic, like in a science fiction movie, that is what we are doing here. Now, what we do is we take one drop of the patient's own blood. That means it is autologous. We have a formulation protected under intellectual property rights and supported in a lot of ways by a lot of scientific validations of which the prime importance is given to the Defense Research Development Organization, which has really spearheaded and helped me in this beautiful, fantastic work, which has taken us more than 12 years, 17,000 patients on whom this has been already utilized. A lot of our work is done for free in any of these situations like a couple of years ago, we had a problem with the Suchetkar border, then we are there helping the BSF. If there's a problem like the floods in Chennai, we are there helping that situation. Whichever area required our importance and need, we were there. What does this one drop of blood do? When it is mixed with manna, it will create that person's own fetal healthy DNA, and when millions of cells come in with that one drop of blood, it will create that person's own stem cells. So that hunt for stem cells is gone. We don't have to hunt for them. There's no religious, ethical, all those kind of deeds are not there at all. Now we call it autologous immune booster injections. You can imagine if this human body has any damage, then that DNA will know where that damage is. We give back the DNA, just pause that for a second. Just pause that one minute. That DNA, we're giving it back. I know I'm a little rushed for time, so I'm trying to cut it really fast. I will answer all your questions after this is over. What you're seeing over here is when blood is meeting manna, a kind of a ball comes out and it is bringing out cells. Each cell is a stem cell. The science always knows as one mother cell divides into two daughter cells. But here you're seeing manna making millions of manna cells. The same you will see of the DNA. This is injected back to the patient, giving back that patient his own immune booster injection. This way, we hope to bring this to all our rural areas and thus bring in health for all by 2020. Thank you very much.